Hello, beautiful seekers, and welcome to Moon Magic. Of course, we are now in eclipse season. So the next couple of Moon Magics, they are a pair. Um, eclipses are really paired together. They really book and a transformational process. And this particular eclipse pairing is really powerful. I really want to focus on this first part of the eclipse season um, very, very clearly today. But just keep in mind, this is only one part of the process, right? So we've got a bookend and connect in. So I'm loving this new moon, first of all. So this is a new moon solar eclipse in Capricorn. It's an annular solar eclipse. It's happening on December 25th into the 26th, 2019. So like it's happening, it's going exact on December 25th at 10, 13 Pacific. So anybody else, basically any further uh, in the east, further east time zones are going to have this really going direct on the 26th. Uh, and yeah, this is in the early degrees of Capricorn. So much energy is working with us in Capricorn right now, as you are well aware, I'm sure, especially if you have Capricorn in your chart, we are really highlighting <laughs> Capricorn energy. That's kind of the star of the show in so many ways right now, especially as Jupiter has just moved into Capricorn. And that's actually a really big message that's coming through with this moon. Jupiter is influencing it hugely. There's a lot of simplicity to this new moon. And this is a very benefic new moon. This is a new moon to really sit in the richness of the earth. Capricorn energy is quite complex because while it is tied to Saturn and to the paternal and to structure and into how we take our masculine energy and we put it into the world and we go forward, it's also deeply tied to roots, to Mother Earth, to the depth of the earth, to the underground. And so Capricorn energy is very dualistic in that way. It doesn't just fit into one um, dynamic when it comes to earthy energy. It really has the seeds of both inside of it. And this new moon is really tapping in to the nurturing side of Capricorn energy. So the sun and the moon are both at four degrees of Capricorn. And Jupiter, our friend Jupiter, who's been getting getting used to being a Capricorn for a little bit here, is for about a month now, is at five degrees of Capricorn. So this is a conjunction with sun, moon, and Jupiter. What a beautiful conjunction. These three, when they're hanging out together, are quite happy. You know, because they, you know, Sun and Jupiter are very expansive, very joyful, very curious, very playful, and Moon is so sensitive and loving. So when the three of them are together, you're kind of getting that like ooey gooey warm feeling, right? Um, and I would say that this new Moon with that eclipse action is an open door. <laughs> and as I was saying that, it made me think of the Frozen song, love is an open door. Yeah. Um, <laughs> it's just like, as I was writing the notes, that song came in, which is really funny. I'm sure many of you have had to listen to that song more than you ever thought you would. But, uh, you know, this is, a, this is kind of the initiating ceremony of Jupiter in many ways. We've been getting used to Jupiter and Capricorn for a little bit here, but this moon kind of really helps us get those flashes of insight about where this journey is taking us, where we're putting that energy, that investment, that commitment, all of that of that good juicy stuff. And if you haven't joined my Patreon, you can still go over there. I have the Jupiter and Capricorn video, which is really helpful if you're trying to get a sense of the logic of that transit, how to use it in 2020. Um, I'll leave the link below. But this is really that initiating ceremony when you have those three together and it's an eclipse. Eclipses are like doorways. You know, they really are energetic doorways where we kind of just, we, we can feel some agreements releasing and we can also feel some agreements intensifying. So, you know, that's what eclipses are really doing at the most essential level. And that doesn't always have to do with who we're agreeing with in the physical world, whether that be, you know, a lover or partners or projects or family. It can also be what we're agreeing to in our thoughts, what we're going to continue to agree to in our thoughts and what we are going to stop agreeing to and um, releasing the, the pressure that we put in those spaces. So this moon is, you know, and new moons are very intention setting. They, they open something up. Uh, this is our last new moon before it's 2020. And of course, you know, those of you who celebrate, 
uh, you can celebrate anything, solstice, Christmas, uh, Hanukkah, like any of these light bringing, light renewal ceremonies, this moon is really beautiful in the context of being there kind of at the tail end, even if you practice Saturnalia, uh, which is the old Roman tradition really tied to Saturn, or if it's your birthday, whatever it is, this new moon, this darkness that's coming through for us, it's like it's setting those intentions. Uh, in the northern hemisphere, this is the darkest time of the year. In the southern, you're in the brilliance of the sun and also assessing what you're wanting to culminate as the the darkness comes towards you. So no matter where you are, this is a beautiful intention setting moon and it's very supportive of you going for it being buoyant spirited about it, you know, not wishing for something and mitigating it and, and kind of downgrading it like 5% or, or 50%, right? Saying, I would really love to be in that loving partnership, but, you know, I'll settle for somebody who's just kind of nice. I don't have to be that attracted to them, <laughs> you know, or um, my friend Aaron Rose, uh, who is an amazing um speaker, thinker, leader, uh, go check him out on Instagram if you haven't. He was talking about how on his vision board he has world peace. And why would he ask for anything less? Why would he ask for like some peace sometimes? Why wouldn't he ask for the bold vision of world peace? Why wouldn't he activate his heart shock or his energy to be in alignment with that? And really, it's a really good question. Why do we feel the need to mitigate those wishes, those joys. And you know, a lot of times our really deeply held wishes, they're not these avaricious, greedy, awful wishes. Because if we're really asking from the heart, you know, we're not going to care about having 20 cars or like all the money in the world. We're really listening to what we're really wishing for. We're wishing for feeling states, right? We're wishing to feel loved, accepted, creative, curious. We're wishing to maybe learn some new skills so that we feel integrated and really present in the world. Uh, you know, they've done studies. Our perception of time actually expands when we're learning new skills, when we're put, you know, when we're learning a new language or a new dance skill or going to a class or just reading more. Our perception of time expands and we feel a lot more like we're living a lot longer than when we're just kind of sitting um, back. So this energy is all kind of inspiring us to get in there and, and think about the things we want to learn. Think about the things we want to invest. Think about those big wishes that we have, like world peace, like deep true love, like peace within your family. I know this is a really hard time for many people, either because you've been through some big losses or because there's tension and wishing for those levels of, of joy and contentment and ease. This moon is asking for us to really go there. And this can actually be a very scary, vulnerable thing. If you haven't let yourself do it fully um, for a few months or ever, however it is, you know, I find that when I have been really in the hustle and bustle for a few months or a few weeks and I haven't sat down to really ask and set intention for what I really want to ask for. I, I get a little uncomfortable at first really saying exactly what it is that I'm asking for because I'm like, am I allowed to do this? I don't know. And so, you know, if you've been kind of limiting yourself or holding yourself back a little bit or feeling a little ragged at the end of the year, it may be a little uncomfortable to feel this energy, this joyous, bountiful energy. And of course, because it's an eclipse, we're closing something out, right? So we're closing out, and this is a really beautiful moon to do some ritual with release. Um, you know, committing to, I'm going to think nurturing loving thoughts toward myself. Committing to dropping effortfulness when it comes to things that aren't working for you. This is a really great time, both practically and emotionally, to look at what you want to drop, what you want to release, because this moon will help you do that naturally. Um, and with the rhythm of it, it's going to embrace lightness, right? It's, it's a very light moon. Um, in, in fact, it's really nice. So we have that conjunction, Sun, Moon, Jupiter. And they're really beautifully aspecting Uranus over in Taurus at two degrees of Taurus. Um, and so it's not an exact aspect, but it's very close. And that's a trine. So we got these earth signs just lit up with these electrical, buoyant, exploratory energies that want to 
try things. And Uranus is very electrical, very experimental. So it's also bringing in surprise, like surprising new ways of thinking about problem solving, surprising new paths forward as far as who you're becoming um, or how the new year is going to look. So there can be really big flashes of insight as well when it comes to what this coming year is going to be. So it's a really beautiful time to sit with all of that. And like I said, this is an easier eclipse. I mean, eclipses affect everybody differently. And some of you may experience it more physically. You may feel it more. Um, you may have more emotions rising up. Some of you may not feel it hardly at all or just feel really light and joyful. It really depends. I know for me, this is actually, I, I'm a Sagittarius rising, but the way my house placements are, I have quite a bit of Capricorn in my first house. So this this uh, eclipse is definitely happening in my first house. So I think it's going to feel a little bit more personal, a little bit more about how my identity is forming and shaping in the world as I move forward. But some of you may feel a little bit more like it's just a, a daydreamy moon or like it's affecting your physical body a little bit more. But generally speaking, it's a very benefic moon. It's a very hopeful moon and it's a very imaginative daydreamy moon. And I love the place that it's in. Like I said, it's right after the solstice. We're in the darkest part of the year up in the Northern Hemisphere. We're about to start 2020. It's a really great pause moment in many ways, almost better than the solstice itself. Uh, let's pull a few cards. Um, and the visibility for this moon is pretty specific. Uh, there's a partial visibility, I think, in like Eastern European, Europe and like parts of Asia. Um, and then South India, the very southern tip of India and Sri Lanka are getting the biggest show, I think. Um, you can look at the map. So most of us here <laughs> in Europe and North America and South America aren't, aren't going to be seeing anything. We're just going to be rolling along. A normal, the sun's going to look normal, the moon's going to look normal, so it's something that's kind of happening uh, secretly in a, in, in a very specific part of the world if, you're, if you ha don't happen to be there. Um, but, you know, you could feel these things anyway. Let's see what we have. Four of Pentacles. Okay. I'm pulling three cards today. Ooh. Lovers and Ten of Pentacles. Okay. This is actually what I was talking about with the asking for what you really want, that Four of Pentacles. That's that part of yourself that says, I'm not allowed to actually ask for it. I'm going to hold myself back a little bit. It's a little scary to affirm what I want. It's a little scary to <laughs> put myself out there in that way. It's a little, I, maybe I should just stay back here where it's familiar because good things, positive things, positive new experiences, positive new learning, positive new friendships, classes, career jumps, relationship levels are not familiar. They're not about repeating what we already know how to do. They're about going and do and learning something new. So the part of ourselves that trusts in the familiar likes to hold us back a little bit and say, well, if I just ask for what I know already, I know I'll be able to handle it. And that part of us wants to keep us safe, right? It's the fear voice. It's not wrong to want to keep us safe but it's not helping us grow. And the thing is, this moon is all over here in the lovers and ten of pentacles. Like, hey, do you want that reciprocity? Do you want that ease of communication? Do you want that release of your throat chakra so that you can actually say to the people you love what you mean? Do you want that release so that you can write or create the thing you want to write and create? Do you want to really invest in something that feels good in your heart because these are big vision energies. These are very expansive energies. These are very much about you diving fully in unabashedly, um, sharing of your joyful, curious nature. A lot of us learn to kind of shut down that very joyful, curious, childlike part of ourselves throughout life because we either get embarrassed or somebody shames us at some point and we create a story that says nobody wants that joyful, curious, creative, easygoing part of me to be seen because it makes them uncomfortable. But that's just a story. Actually, most people are going to want to be around that. And you want to be around that, right? And so letting that bird fly free is really important. Letting that bird out of the cage of this story that it's not desirable to be those things is big part of this moon. Um, letting your, it's not even just about desire. It's about letting your heart song come out, which sounds really cheesy, I know, but it's, it's really important. Um, so there's a simplicity, there's a, there's a crispness to this moon 
um, that's going on. And there's some other things going on in Capricorn, admittedly, while this new moon is happening. But they're not really going to start getting highlighted until we get to the next moon, uh, the full moon in Cancer, which has a very different flavor, I will tell you right now. This joyful, hopeful moon is really important. I want you to take your time with it. Allow the two weeks after this full moon to suffuse you with that warmth. Really take the time, and I'm not kidding, all the way through from Christmas through New Year's until January 10th when we hit into the next eclipse, suffuse yourself with warm thoughts, with hopeful thoughts, um, not overly cheery thoughts. You know, you don't have to be like manically affirmative, just nurturing, nourishing thoughts. You know, that can be very simple and very quiet and very soft. Just, you know, a prayer at the beginning of the day, if you're feeling a little muddled or freaked out that what you need will come to you in that day, whatever you need, just ask, please, whatever I need to see or understand or know, give me the tools and the experience of the connection today that I need in this day and let me be open to finding it. That's all you need to do if you're feeling struggling, like you don't really feel like warm nourishing, nourishing thoughts. If, you, if you're just needing a place to start, that's where I would recommend starting. If you're kind of on a roll and you're feeling good, you know, this is a great time to uh, go on Pinterest and, and pull up pictures of things that warm your heart. Uh, this is a great time to um, meditate, to write out lists, to, you know, write out lists of appreciation. If you're an Abrahamer, you know, rampage of appreciation. This is all great tools. There's a lot of emphasis and this will set you up to have a really, really good lunar eclipse on January 10th, 11th. And that is more of a, this is where we're going to face our shadows. I'll just give you a little preview now. Um, the the lunar eclipse uh, that's coming up in Cancer is going to have us, when you're growing out of your shell, you have to face any shadows that are really trying to pull you back because they have one kind of final uh, retaliation often that shows up and that moon is going to ask us to do that. So the more we are feeling warmth and groundedness and nourishing and nurturing, the more we feel we have an anchor point within that, the more we will be able to work with this Cancer full moon eclipse and allow the blossoming of our soul from the deep dark shadow. So keep that in mind in preparation and as you work through this eclipse season, that the, that's the bookend right there. We, have our, we start with the really jubilant, hopeful, expansive, changing your shape, changing your frequency, growing and expanding you out big and bold. And then because you've changed shape, it flushes out what no longer serves. And when we flush that out, which is the next moon, there's some resistance and some and some intensity. So kind of just keep that all in mind. Don't don't let it get you freaked out. It's just that there's a there's a conversation going on in eclipse season, and this particular one, the Capricorn Cancer uh, axis, is a really really potent, quite uh, quite elemental uh, axis with the father mother grounded emotion axis going on here. So we're getting we're getting down to the very basics of who we are as energy beings in this world. Uh, but I will see you all for that that eclipse discussion very soon um, after we have this first eclipse. I hope it's beautiful for you. I hope you're all having beautiful solstices, Christmases, Hanukkahs, whatever you celebrate. I hope you are having a really nourishing, nurturing time, whatever you do, even if you don't celebrate any of those things and you're just in the end of this year. I'm wishing you all a beautiful end to the year. Like I said, I'm going to be adding some really beautiful things to my Patreon, some gratitude uh, exercises. I'm going to be walking you through some things and some tools to use for the end of this year and these moons and all of that. So if you're interested in checking in a little bit more deeply with me, I'd highly recommend you go pop over there. Thank you to those of you who have joined me. Uh, you can also find me on my Instagram, Sarah Verba or on my website, sarahverba.com. I am still not opening up my 2020 calendar quite yet, still working on some technical things with my schedule and where I'm going to be. Uh, but if you would like to find out when I'm opening up that calendar, you can email me and I will add you to the notification list. Also, of course, I'm wearing pink loon. Uh, my best friend, my girl, uh, she's amazing. Go check out her Etsy shop below. And I will see you all 
for the next eclipse in Cancer.